we are going to make a casting of this train. Well, maybe not that train, this train. And there are significant casting challenges in this. First of all, it's absolutely full of holes, millions of teeny tiny little holes. It's also got tiny little features like these pins. Love to trap air bubbles in there. And the biggest difficulty of all are these paper thin walls. There's just nowhere to put vents and sprues for getting the resin in there. So it's gonna to have to be a squish mold for sure. And the real difficulty is gonna be holding this interior mold perfectly in alignment with the outer mold. Because if it's even a little tiny bit off, forget about it. You're gonna have paper thin walls over here. You're gonna have thick walls over here. You're just gonna have a mess. This has a very high probability of failure, but let's give it the old college try. Okay, so we've got the box. This is the wood, the wooden pieces are here. Nice thick walls all around, ready to go. Let's head on over to the table saw. Got the holes all drilled and countersinked. Put some screws in and finish this box up. Now that the box is all screwed together, we need to cut it apart into a top and bottom section. We need a registration system to hold the top frame, which I just cut on the table saw, to the bottom frame. So the other side piece is gonna go on just exactly the same as are the end pieces, like that. By the way, I tapered, just took the sander and tapered the top part of these blocks just to give it a little bit of a easier press down. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Man, that is dead flush. That's why I made this as a single box and table sawed it apart because I want this to be absolutely in registration. This box registration system is gonna guarantee that the outer mold around here, this part, is gonna be in perfect registration with the mold that drops in. The entire inside surface is laminate. So the only place I really have to worry about sealing the wood is on the edges. Any place that there is unfinished wood, I'm inclined to put a coat of beeswax. Each and every one of these windows requires a parting line running through it. And to do those parting lines, I'm just gonna soften up a lump of oil clay. The outer surface of the train is much flatter compared to the inside surfaces, which just have a tremendous amount of, of notches and divots and stuff in there. So it's gonna be very hard to clay those up. The thickness of the clay doesn't matter at all. What matters is that it's got a nice flat surface. Cut little pieces of clay and stick them on. Just kind of press them on, but you don't want to press them on too hard because all you want to do is stop those holes up. That's all there is to this. And you don't want to squish the clay in or you'll extrude it through the hole, which is exactly what you don't want to do. You just want it on there hard enough to stick and make a flat spot. Okay, the clay work is done. I mixed up a tiny amount of rubber and now we're just going to start dropping it in. I generally just put the rubber alongside the hole on one side and put a nice blob there and hope that it will just run in from that side and fill the hole. This really is a craftsman's job because the more time and care and energy you put into a mold, the more likely you are to get good castings out of it. All the holes are filled and we should have a good first layer. The first batch of rubber is all cured. The reason I didn't fill this mold was I didn't want to put any pressure on those clay dams. I just put enough rubber in there just to seal everything up. The thing about making this mold is we're going to have to make it in a series of pours. It's impossible to pour a mold like this in a single pour. This is not a one-piece cut mold. It's a two-part mold where the parting line runs all the way around the shape. All right, the rubber is all cured beautifully, no bubbles. Oh, but now comes the important part. Did this work? Let's see, did we succeed? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, look at that. Perfect parting lines. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanna see. Now, if I get that on the rest of them, big winner. Let's see how I did. I can't get to bragging yet, 
because I won't know until I see them all. That one's fine, that one's tiny. Those are perfect. Big test, big test. Oh, oh, perfection eluded me. See, I got a little bit of flash bleed under this one. I'm gonna have to very carefully cut that. So not 100%, not A+, plus, but good so far. That one's fine. Perfect. A little bit of flash bleed. Those are gonna work. There's a little bit, a tiny bit of clean it to be done, but man, oh man, it didn't get a heck of a lot better than that. Beautiful, okay, I'm pleased with that. The next step is that we need to seal the locomotive part to the base. It's held in place by these two tape straps and it's pretty flat. It's got a nice contact between the base, the part and the base. So what we wanna do now is just make a gasket. So I mixed up a small amount of this rubber and we're gonna see if we can't pour a gasket. We wanna seal that edge without pushing a lot of rubber underneath the part. And there's just not enough weight of rubber to jam it underneath to overcome this downward pressure and we should get a nice crisp edge around that part. That's what we're going for. As we assemble the wooden box parts to the other wooden box parts, there is the possibility that the mold box could leak. To prevent it from leaking, we're going to lay down a gasket of rubber. And this is just the same old rubber we've been using all along, but it has included in it some polyethylene mini fibers, which is a white powder like that. See down in there? Nice white powder. It's a super fine, fluffy white powder. And what that does is it turns regular pouring rubber into more of a paste, which is excellent for building caskets. Flip it over and set it. And I can see the gasket material just squeezing out just perfect all the way around. Okay, we have a 100% gasket seal all the way around the box. And let's do the final pour on this side. With any luck, I mixed up enough rubber to pour this mold in one piece. Okay, let's pour some rub. Let's pour some rubby. Let's pour some rubber. Now I am not going to drape the model. I'm going to pour from the bottom of the container up. I'm very pleased that I mixed enough rubber to completely cover the model with virgin rubber. That's great. But I need to fill this mold all the way to the top. And that's what chunkies are for. Break out the chunkies. Stick those in there and fill this mold up with old mold. That's what we like to do. The bigger the chunkies you can push in, the better. All right. First part of the mold is ready to go. Let's pry it open and see what's what. As you can see, despite our very best efforts, we still got a little bit of rubber gloop underneath this part, which is not what we want. So that's gonna all have to be very, very, very carefully cut out. Now, when we pour this second half, we want the rubber to stick to the inside. We do not want it to stick to this parting line. We have to put mold release on the parting line, but we have to be careful not to get mold release where we don't want it. That is well and truly released. All right, boys and girls, let's pour some rubber. There's not much in this mold that can catch air. This is about as close to a dump pour as you can get. So we just got to get to filling it up. Wow, this mold took five pours and uh, plus two more for the gaskets because that's a total of seven mixes of rubber. It's a complex mold to make. Tomorrow morning we'll know whether or not I have succeeded or if uh, I just wasted another week of my life. So uh, fingers crossed and we'll look at it first thing in the morning. Okay, it's the next morning and this box is ready to come apart. I've never made a mold like this before. Uh, I just do stuff on this channel <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's fun. So what we're looking at is the magical powers of mold release in action. Well, that frame came out nice. This is the exciting part. <laughs> see how that rubber is separating right on that parting line, right where we put it? Now see, there are some little bits of stickiness in there. Where's my knife? Where's my knife? If I have to make little cuts, I have to make little cuts. I'll do it. It looks like it's... Oh, look at that. 
Okay, so now it's sticking a little bit on this side. Getting a little bit more stick here. Why oh, I did that? I really brushed carefully everywhere. So this is a slight fail because I am sticking a little bit here on this side. It did not release properly. Whatever life gives you, you've got to go with it. Damn. 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 Okay. I am not happy about that because what that's going to mean is we're going to have a little tiny bit of flash parting line right there. That's not a win. Uh, so there's going to be some post finish, no doubt about it. There's going to be some post finish. And uh, that's we're just going to have to live with that. Well, we didn't achieve perfection, but I think this mold will give us reasonably clean castings. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.